Right, good day boys and girls. Uh, welcome to Guitar World. Um, got a treat for you today. I don't know if you can see what's up on the screen there. You'll see there's some kind of semi hollow machine up there on that screen. I'm not going to zoom in. So I'm going to show you what I've got here today. I've never actually seen one of these before. Look at this. Oh, it's a beautiful weight to it as well. What an absolute beauty. Epiphone. Epiphone Wildcat Royale. We have Bigsby, Licence Bigsby B70 Bigsby uh, Tremolo on there. You've got Epiphone Dog Ear P90 pickups. You've got a bridge volume, neck volume, uh, a master tone and a master volume. Three way pickup selector. It's in, it's white royale, it's in a right, it's, it's in a white sparkle with, look at that for bling, a gold sparkle binding, not just on the outside and across the neck or down the neck, but also on the F holes. Semi hollow, it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck, a maple cap top, it's got a solid block of wood running down the centre, like all good 335 style semi hollow guitars do. Beautiful, nice wide neck, uh, proper Grover tuners, made at the Epiphone Custom Shop. It will be made in China, their Custom Shop has moved out to China, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. I, I actually know for a fact that when they took production, Epiphone production from Korea to China, the actual Gibson owners flew out to China and they oversaw the building and the, the, the not just not just the building of the factory but the building and production of these guitars all the quality control is by Gibson or Epiphone engineers um, who are actually based out in China so I know it's a great factory making great guitars limited edition like I say would you believe if I told you would you believe that these retail for under 400 of your British pounds these are £369 brand new, you can buy one today exactly the same as this. What a stunning looking guitar, not my style, not something I'd play. But you know, each to their own, I know the guy who owns this, Richard, Richard he, he loves this guitar. He's a new, he's a new guy, I've not, I've not seen any of it, I've not worked on any of his guitars before. Um, really, really nice guy, he come round, we had a chat. And uh, he's left his guitar in my capable hands and we're going to see what we can do with it. So, on to what is wrong with it. Well, there's not really anything wrong with it. I did go across with Fret Rocker and, and discovered that there are four rocking frets. Not, not majorly high, but four rocking frets. So, uh, Richie has decided, he just says, give it the works. Give it the absolute works. So, he's having the full bit, he's having the intensive setup, which is basically a strip down. And rebuild from the bottom up it means i'll be checking the electrics um if there's any crackling or anything on there we'll get some switch cleaner in there we're checking the electrics i'll be checking the tuners i'll be taking everything off i'll be checking the pickups checking the wiring and um, we'll go for a complete setup on there which means we'll alter the intonation we'll set the the pickup height well, well we can't alter the pickup height it's what it is We'll alter the action on the neck above the 12th fret. We'll make sure the nuts cut right. We'll tighten all the tuners. Um, we'll make sure the tremolo's all lubricated. We'll put some new strings on there. We'll get them stretched in and tuned up. We'll check all of the electrics, check the strap pins, the whole lot. Did I mention checking the tuners and the nut? Yes, I think I did. Uh, we will also level the four frets that need leveling. We'll recrown the four that are high. And then finally, we'll give the frets a polish. Uh, we'll also clean up the fingerboard area, we'll get some uh, good lemon oil, mineral oil in there, uh, get a good soak in that so it feeds the wood, we only need to do that once a year, that'll feed the wood and it'll clean up all the grime, um, and that's it, and we'll put all the guitar all back together, get it strung up, back to tension, and um, it can go back. Strings wise, I've decided we're going to go with, I'm going to put 10s on there, we're going to go with good old Deodario XL 10s, uh, five pound a set if you get these off me. Go to a shop and try and get these for a fiver. Won't be happening. They'll be, these will cost you eight quid a set. I don't pay. I pay just under five quid a set for these because I buy them in bulk. So we're going to go with a set of them on there. So that's it. I'm going to crack on. Not really going to film the work. Um, there's no need. Um, I'll just give it a good clean up. Give it a strip down. I might come back with updates here and there. But I'm going to crack on. This will be done. 
it'll be done today, obviously. Gonna crack on, I'll come back maybe with a mini update again later. See you soon. So I thought I'd come back with a little bit of an update on the um, Wildcat Royal um, guitar because we're getting some crackling from the freeway. Uh, so I've gone in with a bit of a uh, service old switch cleaner. We've cleaned that up, we're getting no crackling now. I'm going to turn the camera onto the guitar. So just bear with a second. And you can see where I'm at. So, we can't avoid that switching. All the crackle's gone. Also, we had crackling on the input jack. Now, the input jack was loose, I've tightened it up, but one of the wires came off. So, I've resoldered the wires and I'm just about to put it back in the guitar. So everything is going to be absolutely bang on once I refit this. Um, just two screws here. Which way is it going? Don't go in that way. Maybe I'll need to turn that round one way or another. Just lining up the holes. Yeah, that's fine. We're in. We're in there, duck. Where are we? As the case may be. So we're just going to tighten up these, make sure the um, lead goes in properly, guitar lead, so we've got no problems. Wow, so I think I'm putting my blind map, they're all skewed with these screws, but you know. Let's check that everything's in order, that the input jack goes in. Right, there you go, no longer loose, that's fine. All the switches are working fine, no crackle. Satisfied with that, all the electrics are working absolutely fine. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the other areas, uh, mainly being the frets. So what I'm going to do is, been across with the uh, not straight edge, there's a bit of relief in there. Once I've taken the strings off, that relief, which is basically bow that way, or, or a smiley bow, tiny bit in there. Once the strings are off, that will tension back out and it should be level. Once I've made sure the next level, I'm going to go across with a fret rocker. Blah -de blah blah blah, and we're going to identify the four frets that are high and rocking, and we're going to uh, shave some off the top. I shall come back and um, show a bit of that when I'm ready to do it. Back soon. Welcome back. Um, as you can see, I've got the strings off the guitar. The neck is absolutely straight now. Get it a little twist on the truss rod just to get the guitar over the neck absolutely level. Uh, take my word for it, you can't see it from here. Take my word for it, it's absolutely level. There's no gaps under this not straight edge. So the neck is absolutely straight. Now, what I've done is, I've gone across with fret rocker. If you've not seen a fret rocker before, what we do is we go across three frets at a time. And if we get a rock, we know the middle one is high. We only ever do three at a time. Now, I've quoted him for five, four high frets. I've actually been across, there are 11 high frets. So by rights, this should be having a complete Re, uh, fret level on the jig which takes about three hours extra but uh, I've decided I'm not going to do that I'm going to do it all by hand I'm not going to um, alter anything the quote is the quote and blah 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to show just for my peace of mind and because I always show the customer what, need, what work he's doing on a guitar we can take it as given that the neck is straight because you all know I don't lie I'm going to go across with fret rock and the first fret rocking is fret four now if you listen out 
you see in that middle part there the fret is high because we do three at a time if we get a rock anywhere it means just the middle one is, is high whenever we do three frets at a time again the next one fret five in the middle it's fine but at the edges it's rocking there and it's rocking there it means these two edges are high and I'm going to go across all the other frets in a minute show you all of them but what we do is in this situation where these bits are high and that bits are high what we're going to do is I'm going to take a flat file and I'm going to level this, file, this fret until there's no rock once there's no rock I'll take a curved notched fret file and I'll put that crown back because once I've filed it flat I've got to put that crown back and we'll go across and put that crown back in it and I'll use either this file or I'll use my three cornered file with, with ground edges which I prefer to use because you get a feel for it and you basically you come across and as you go across and get the curve in you curve at an angle when you just bring it over so I'm not going to explain too much on that because we all know how that works but I'm going to get back on to there's two frets the next one six is fret seven fret six is okay no rock fret seven rock in once we get to this end it's okay so all of that so that's three frets one two three I'm not going to count the number of frets now um, we're going to come to the next one rock in rock in this one here rock in that's five frets this one that's six this one that's seven next one's okay this one that's eight this one nine skip one this one very very high there ten next one's okay next one eleven So we have 11 frets with high spots. Now what I'd normally do in this situation, I'd take a flat leveling beam with sandpaper and I'd redo the whole lot. We'd go up and down and we'd level the whole lot. Once that's done, it means we have to recrown the whole lot. It takes about three hours to do that, two, three hours with the polishing, maybe even four hours. I'm not gonna do that this time, I'm gonna do it all by hand. I'm gonna level them all with one flat file. This is actually a Swiss number three file, if you wanna know what cut it is. Um, it's cut three, so it's a very fine file. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taping up the frets one by one individually. And once I can get the end of find the end of this tape, there you go. And I'm going to show you one fret. Now I do it, now I level it. I'm going to come each side. This is so I don't dig into the fingerboard and mark the fingerboard because we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is. I'm not going to show you exactly because it's odd with the camera where it is, I'm not going to get to the angle I need. But what I'm going to basically going to do is I'm going to take my flat file, I'm going to check where we're high. Now I know we're high from this area to this area, so it's about an inch on the middle of the fret. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flat file and I'm going to take that area off. And I'm just going to, a couple of steady strokes, I'm not going to do anything major. And there you go, you see. It's rocking just a little bit, but not too much. We don't need just because it's rocking doesn't mean we have to remove a lot of material. We're talking, we're talking tenths of a millimeter here. Again, we go across. Still a little bit high. Now, as you can see, because I'm removing material, these frets are going to have a curve. But I've got to put the curve back in. Still a little bit high. But we never want to remove too much material. This is why we have to be a little bit careful. You can see the tape's there doing its job. There you go. We've now got the fret level. There's no rock anywhere now. Now what I've done is because I've flattened it, I said I need to put that curve back in. It's called the crown. To put the crown back in, we could use this file. It's just a matter of going across and putting the curve back on, but I prefer to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker pen, any colour, doesn't matter, red one. I'm going to colour in this fret. This is all for the benefit of any new people watching my videos. Uh, I've done many videos on this, and now what I've done is I've coloured in the top of the fret. I'll zoom in a little bit, give you an idea. This is a fret I'm working on. I've coloured in the top and what I need to do now is that band of red is about two millimetres wide. I need to get that to half a millimetre. 
because I want to put the crown back in and I just want a bead, a half mil bead of red down that fret. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use my crowning file and all we do is it's a matter of going across and angling this way with every stroke and I'm going to put that curve back into the fret. You see there, but I'm going to come the other side, do exactly the same. Take my word for it, we have now got a thin bead of pen. I'm going to blow away the dust. We've only got the thinnest line of red on that fret now. It means only where the thin line is red, that's the bit that's going to touch the string, the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. We've now got a curve back in there. Once I've done that and got the curve back in, I'll go with this file and I'll just smarten it up. And this will remove any burrs um, we've still got hanging on there. And now, that is the fret filed flat and re-crowned. We've still got that roundness back in now. That's one fret done. See, now that's not the finish of it. We're going to have to polish this as well. We use various grits, a couple of grit, different grits of sandpaper coming from 1,000 grit up to 2,000 grit and anything in between. And we'll finish off with a little bit of steel wool. Which I've got a little bit of steel wool now. I could just go across and just polish that up. And that is like having a brand new fret. There you go, that's now polished up and rounded. That's absolutely fine. Now if we go across with a fret rocker, and there you go, that fret is levelled. I've now got 10 more to do, so what I'll do is, I'll move across to this one. And I'll do exactly the same with this fret. Where it's high, I'll bring it back to level. Blah, 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 blah. And I will have, after that one, I'll have nine more to do. I am going to crack on with this, there's an hour or so, probably an hour and a half work in here, probably a little bit more, um, you know, I'm going to crack on with it, but look at that fret now, look, absolutely, this is the one I've done, let me zoom back in, I pride myself on my fret work, and there you go, that's the one I've just done, absolutely beautifully round, it's unscratched, it's beautiful, like I say, 11 more to do, uh, I'll get them all level. Once that's done, we can start putting the guitar back together, get some strings on, get it set up, blah de blah blah blah. I am going to crack on with this. Um, I will come back when I'm ready to set up the guitar and I'll let you know the progress, what I've done and what I need to do. Right, just a quick update because I'm knocking off, uh, well I'm going for my dinner now and I've got other things to do today. Uh, you'll see that the frets have all been done. Uh, the neck well, the fingerboard has been oiled, go with Kaiser lemon oil, which in fact is a mineral oil specially formulated for rosewood and ebony neck guitars. It's not lemon oil on its own, it's just got a hint of lemon in there, just to make it smell nice, that's why it's called lemon oil, but not to be confused with real lemon oil, which will actually rip your wood to pieces. It's actually specially formulated by companies like Gibson, Deodario, Kaiser, Dunlop, blah, 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 blah. These people know what they're doing, so... Fingerboard is all oiled, the frets are all leveled and polished. There's a bit of pitting, not pitting, a couple of grooves on a couple of these frets. You may look at the fret level further down the line, but they're absolutely fine for now. I'm going to zoom in. You can see that the frets have all been done, they're all beautiful. The neck's still level, obviously. Straight, perfectly straight. Um, I've been across with a fret rocker. All the frets are now level and re -crowned. Uh, absolutely beautiful, take my word for it, I stand by my work, that's why I video everything. So that's it, it's where I've done, I've also, you're probably not going to see from there, but I've wiped over the whole guitar, I've polished up the, the um, pickups, the tremolo, front and back, um, it looks absolutely brand new. This final ball thing, I'm now ready, I've also by the way, tightened up the tuners on these screws here, uh, the bushings, tightened up all the screws on the machine heads, uh, and at the back, so that's all we've done. All I need to do really now is test the strap pins, that they're all set all right, um, get some strings on it, get the intonation done, get the string stretched, get it all set up, and that will be it. I will be coming back with a final update sometime later this afternoon. Right, good day Guitar World. Um, back with this wonderful Epiphone Wildcat, um, I can't remember what it was, Supreme Deluxe, whatever, Royale. 
Epiphone Wildcat Royale. Now, I was unable to finish this guitar yesterday as planned because uh, I had to come and fetch my car from the pound. Don't ask why it was in the pound. All I can say is I've got the car back, it's cost me 770 quid. I don't want to talk about it no more. So, anyway, for that reason, I was out all yesterday afternoon and I couldn't get this guitar finished. So, I finished it this morning and I was up at six anyway this morning. Uh, I, want, I, I woke up, I want tired, I couldn't get back to sleep. I thought I'd get up, I'll do some work or whatever. Or I'll do some guitars and I, cut, and I got up and I did this guitar and I've just finished it. And there you go. Epiphone Wildcat Royale. <clears throat> this guitar is super bling. Look at the binding on that. All sparkly binding on the F-holes, on the guitar body, on the neck. Um, and you'll notice it looks fantastic. It looks brand new. There you go. So let's recap what I've done on this. It came in, a couple of frets were high. Well, I thought a couple of frets were high. It happened, there were 11 frets high. So I've leveled off the frets. I've re and polished them. I've also had to go at the electrics inside. The electrics were fine themselves, but this pot, this uh, switch was scratchy, so I've fixed that. Got some switch cleaner in there. I had to re-solder the input jack because it wasn't quite right. It would cut it out. One of the wires come off when I, when I were sorted out the electrics. I've stripped and rebuilt the tremolo. I've polished up the tremolo front and back. I've polished up, I've done the intonation. I've polished up the pickups. I've tightened the tuners front, top and back. All the screws have been tightened on there. So it's Ed the full works. I've reset the neck, I've checked the nut, I've cleaned all the slots in the nut. It's had the whole works, this guitar. It's had the full bits, had the complete intensive setup. So what I reckon, it's an absolute beauty. Um, I've not plugged it in yet. Um, I've got to just plug it in, and we'll just have a nice clean sound on there, and a little bit of reverb, just to test that the electrics are all alright. I've already shown the electrics working fine. I'm just going to stick it in there. I think we're on a clean channel, we are. And there you go. Drop my gain a little, we'll get on middle pick up. Absolutely beautiful thing this guitar is like I say not my style not for me not something I'd play but uh, It's a beauty. There's a couple of little marks on the back. Oh, there was also a sticker mark on the back there with sticker stuck on there I've had, I've had a little bit of white spirit on that. We've cleaned that up took that off there People say you shouldn't uh, wipe guitars with white spirit. Well, I don't tell you I've been wiping guitars with white spirit for 30 odd year and you get you white spirit on and you get it off again and it's the best thing for removing gunk glue Grime, muck, whatever you don't use fucking white spirit, what's up with you? Anyway, pardon me French. Uh I normally keep swearing to uh times like when I tread in dog shit when I'm out with a dog or whatever, but anyway, so that's it. This guitar is finished. What an absolute beauty. Rich is on his way. Richard the governor, uh Tyler is on his way to fetch this guitar right now. I know he's going to be pleased with it, I'm pleased with it, um, and if I'm pleased with it, I know the customer's going to be pleased with it because I've got very, very high standards. So that's it, it's another project done. Um, like I say, done, wrapped up, ready to go. So that's it. It's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday, it's about 9am. Um, this one's all wrapped up. So, as always, until the next project, be good to each other, and I'll see you soon.